Welcome to Music Interact from Mac. I'm going to demonstrate the product and all its features. Um, right now I just launched the product and I'm going to select the um, digital instrument that I have set up here as a MIDI device. We're going to expand the size of the screen a little bit so that you can have a better view. I will log into a already pre-created account uh, that already has a license. Now. New licenses can be purchased through the Mac uh, App Store, um, and it's based on user um, licenses. So each person has their independent license, can access this uh, from any computer, any device, which basically allows multiple users on a single device. If, um, uh, if you happen to have a teacher who happens to have several students, they can uh, log, come in, log in, practice uh, their pieces for the session, and then when they're done, they leave and they can continue at home as well. So um, we're already logged in. I'm going to um, open up the directory where the music is. I already have a list of music that is personal uh, selection that I have. Every per user will have their own collection of pieces that they like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select one of the pieces that I, that I put in. We have over 200 um, pieces of music that are available for students and teachers to use uh, from various levels of difficulty. Here we have a piece that's called the Bure. Uh, you could slide up and down the screen. You can see what it is. Um, students can identify the notes by clicking on each of the notes individually and the letter name will pop up. And this feature is also available in the play mode. You can play the music. So students can hear or teachers, of course, can enjoy the music as well. So I'm going to stop that and I'm going to go ahead and click the play mode. So the idea is that the first note is lit up in a bluish color. When I play the notes, the notes shift to a different section. I could go on as such. Okay, let me get rid of this here as it's making a little bit of noise. And I could continue playing. Now, let's suppose I make a mistake. Then you're alerted immediately of the error that you made. You have the opportunity to correct the sound. And the notes that turned out incorrect are in red, so that way you could reference later what you did incorrectly. Then you could go on. If I continue, I could also, um, also add a keyboard uh, display so that students can see what they're playing. So here, the note that's lit in the light blue uh, tells you what note is next to play. So for this, the performer presses that note, there's a dot that appears on the key that they press. If I play a different key, so you can see I'm playing incorrect notes, but the lightest blue will actually say tell you which notes you're supposed to play. So if I go on, and we'll go on. Right now the repeats are ignored, but you could enable the ability to do the repeats. And for now, we'll just keep going. So the next step is a uh, statistics report of the performance. All these items that you see with bars to show a lag in the time that, that the performer, um, for each pause or any uh, interruption that they had in their playing. The goal is to have as flat as a line as possible so that um, you can show that you have very accurate and steady rhythm. Um, rhythmic accuracy in this example is 88% with note accuracy at 61%. So we did make some errors. Also with the note duration and, and how long the notes are held. There is a different view of, of the same statistics but how, how they compare to what they should actually be. And here I have past performance uh, examples of, of, of this uh, uh, showing the various scores that I received and you can see the dates and when when these scores were achieved as it turns out uh, for the performance that I just did um, the overall score uh, let's see if we could pull, pull that away we'll obtain that in a moment it looks like my tempo accuracy is actually within a one point uh, uh, negative one uh, percent difference uh, leaving it at a 98 percent accuracy now here we have a couple of nice features I could perform I could play the piece uh, back to, to do, be able to enjoy what I just did. Of course, we'll hear all the errors that come with it. Um, so we'll go ahead and stop that because that's a little noisy. 
I could also save the file so that it could be played on a, um, a, any MIDI uh, playback app. Um, I, I'm able to play it on QuickTime 7, and I think that uh, that's a wonderful tool to, to be able to play back MIDI files. So we're going to close that, and I'm going to give you some other examples here, uh, some wonderful features that we can do. We can do hands separate. So if I want to learn the bass part, and stop that. I could do the right hand as well uh, by itself and I could basically switch that off. Another thing we could do is work in sections. So suppose I wanted to start from this part of the measure and I wanted to end right here. I can just play this part and practice this until I learn it really well. And then this part is done. And of course you get the scores that are associated with that as well. Um, we're going to exit this. We already saw the example with keyboard and then demonstration. I'm going to show you an example that contains ornamentation. And we'll flip right into a level three piece here. Minuet and G has several ornaments such as the Morden. Students can um, tell by uh, clicking on the ornament how the ornament is to be played. So, in order to be able to get the ornaments in, we have to enable the ornament feature. If this is turned off, the ornaments are ignored and you just play the pitches as written. Let's go ahead and turn that on and we're going to go ahead and play this out. Good. So the ornament is just performed. Now, as a performer, we'll just go ahead and play that. So, by Having this feature, then students will be able to play the music as written, and I think that uh, this pretty much sums up this part. I'm going to turn that. And if we enable the repeats, I think we'll be able to demonstrate how the music could be played with the, rep the repeat signs as well. Of course, the playbacks are, are in there. I'm going to disable the um, ornamentation, and we'll just go ahead and play with the repeats. So here you have. And then repeat starts just back to the beginning. So there you go. Um, the next step is um, pretty much what we see here. Everything is pretty much covered. So the product is basically a well-rounded uh, product covering every pedagogical issue that a student um, can address as they're learning to play a piece. Uh, they could work in sections. They can work hands separately. Um, Ornamentations are included, repeats are included, it also includes the uh, De Capo Al Fine, so students could go back to the beginning and play until they reach Fine. Um, the music is basically stored on another uh, server, so all the music data um, is accessible from any computer, and uh, any new materials that we provide will be uh, provide, will display on the directory menu. So uh, an entire list of pieces that are available uh, can be seen uh, on this list right in the view directory. And some of the music is, is basically free for students to try uh, in the trial version. But when students uh, or teachers subscribe, they get the entire music library. The um, music is basically um, accessible through an annual license. And that's pretty much how the product works. So if there's any uh, additional features or details that I missed, um, I think the best way to, to go about it is just to download the product and play with it and explore and try it out yourself. Um, it is a fun uh, program to work with. Here we have our score. We could also break it down into even smaller segments and so on. So all the details and the performance are there. One thing I could add is that teachers also have access to the student performance data uh, with a mobile device like the iPad. Uh, they can log into a website. Um, uh, that's uh, basically held by Trebleus uh, to to um, show the statistics of each of their students' uh, performance. Um, they could tell how how long or how much um, time the students have been practicing, what days they've been practicing, and they could also see their 
uh, results. So that's, that's another feature that I can show uh, at another time. Um, and of course, I'd like to have an app uh, eventually just for, for the iPad that will basically allow teachers to uh, monitor students' performance uh, progress as well. But this is it. This is the Music Interact. Uh, it's 1.1 for Mac. And uh, a PC version is also available. And it's accessible to all students who, who need it. So anyways, thank you very much.